The University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor, the radio show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower Chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. We are back on Zoom, thanks to this lovely Michigan weather. So literally just a few hundred feet away from me is Professor Dave Chow. Pleasure to be here, as always. Excellent. Coming to you live from Berkeley, Michigan. What's going on? You got your headphones to work. I finally got them to work. I, you know, right. I, I can, I don't have to bombard the house with everyone else's noise. So. <laughs> uh, is Marcy at work today, or is she? No, at home? they they sent her home at noon today. Well, isn't that nice? It is, but she's got to go in tomorrow and work. So, oh, oh well, that's oh. okay. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> eh. that's it bad. is what it is. It is. So no complaints. Sometimes it's all hands on deck when it comes to uh, snow removal. Let's be serious, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. But not for long. That's right. That's right. Uh, continuing around the horn known as my uh, um, computer screen is Professor Beth Oljar. Hey, Matt. What's going on? Uh, not a whole lot. Did classes online today from exactly where you uh, see me now so that's I can right the computer plugged in in so the great city of detroit yep so it doesn't just crash out on me because of a low battery right in the middle of <laughs> class which i've had happen before oh yes we all make those mistakes at least once at least once so Hopefully looking never forward again. to spring break oh gosh yes looking forward to spring even though you know we all know that winter weather came to us right before spring this year instead of the other way around it's kind of weird, but we got a big snowstorm coming through Michigan. Good to be surrounded by water most of the time. Mm-hmm. Most of the time. As long as it's not frozen. That's right. That's right. Because I'm sure Professor Dan Maggio, next on the list here, could uh, tell us all sorts of tales about uh, power loss during <laughs> the middle of ice storms. I wasn't the only one. You were not. You and 699,999 buddies. But I will tell you a funny story. It's not funny. Um, the first night I got a hotel. Um, and the second night I waited a little bit just to see. But by the time I realized it was time to get a hotel, we couldn't find one anywhere. I... Um, so that's how we ended up in the house for the night. But then the next night I was clever. I'm like, well, I'm not going to wait. So I booked one through booking.com. Oh, good. This will be a negative advertisement for them. So... Um, <laughs> I show up at the hotel and the, the guy says to me, so I, I, I won't go into the fact that he was wearing a, a knit cap and he had like a, what appeared to be a cigarette in his ear, Ooh. but he says to me, um, we're overbooked by 30. We don't have any rooms. And I said, I have a confirmation and I already paid booking.com. He said, well, you have to talk to the third party, not us. Wow. So Fortunately, I was able to get a hold of somebody in booking.com, which apparently is in the Netherlands, uh, and I got my money back. But nice. uh, for the record, I, I would uh, not patronize any of the hotels near the intersection of 14 and Stevenson. And we should have known that because they've been in the news <laughs> oh. for other questionable activities. So it's activities. probably a blessing that that happened. Yes. <laughs> and Dan would, yeah. would have, would have gone, going through like, you know, Airbnb or something like that. Would that have helped possibly? So we, we looked at Airbnbs and they were actually pretty cheap. We could have got a house in Berkeley for like $99. But then when you add in the taxes and the cleaning fees, you're at 300 right. Oh, right. Yeah. Three? Holy. Yeah. 268 it was. You so have called like, me, even I know though we gets up so early. We I had you. Scared, but... um, so we ended up, we found, uh, we, we, we everything worked out. But it was it was interesting. So I was... you don't know what how important power is until you're out of it. That's oh. right. I was really hoping that story was going to end with you reaching over the desk and pulling that toque down I over his laughed. face. Yeah. But I thought, it's just, this is such an unprofessional way to greet people. You think? Um, <laughs> you know what else is unprofessional? 
several billion dollars of federal infrastructure coming directly into the state more than a year ago and not being used to update the power grid. <laughs> That's what well, I think. And, and then, then I also saw the meme, what was it? They were talking about how in Florida, how like a, a class six hurricane can hit and within 48 hours, everybody gets their power restored. That's right. Well, wouldn't That's right. if we buried power lines you underground, think? we'd have yeah. less issues with the kinds of things that routinely Boy. cause us issues. Let's never forget that it took a certain number of months and a certain number of dollars, but the entire plumbing system of the city and local in Flint, Michigan was overturned in about four to six months. So you can do those sorts of oh, things yeah. if you just get a crew going, you know? It's a so, question so. of investment. Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, and apparently spending. Yes, yes, yes. And priorities. There we go. Those being the dulcet tones of Professor Jason Roach, our executive producer and, of course, benefactor. Good to have you on the show, Jason. It is so great to be back. Thank God for snow days. <laughs> <laughs> Although you had you had half a snow day with the kids, right? I did. Yep. And it's always interesting. There's just <laughs> so much more energy when it's a snow day. Of course. Oh, I love it. I find it hard enough to program 75 minutes of organic chemistry, much less, you know, several consecutive hours of fifth grade, whatever, at least in my house, that's what it is. So, well, folks, uh, this is a program you can send us questions regarding anything. I don't know, famous power outages. Is that a thing? Do you stump the panel? You win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you win a prize. You can send us the questions in a number of ways, emailing us at atp at udmercy.edu. Find us on Facebook and Instagram or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. Okay, great fun here. Really, really recent set of questions, like in the last 24 hours. That's pretty good, right? Hmm. Uh, dear professors, below is a set of questions across the spectrum. I hope we'll confound and test your wide breadth of knowledge. Have fun with them. Sincerely, our good friend, Amber Hubley, Amber Hubley, longtime mm. question sender. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just, when the first question is this crack a lack and you just know it's going to be a fun day because Rowan and Martin mentioned Funk and Wagnall's encyclopedia and an ongoing joke on Laughing, their mm -hmm. famous TV show, sales supposedly rose by what percentage that quarter? I love it. it wow. 1,000 percent. Yeah, 1,000 percent. Yeah, that's a good guess, but it's a little bit shooting over the top. Oh. It is a non negative number, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, 150%. 200. No, you know, it says here it was only um, 30%. So I think oh. that we're, uh, oh. we're doing okay. But I mean, okay. I, just the fact was... that it actually, you know, increased the. Uh, um, no, no. Do, you, know, do you remember? Do you remember first time I think we mentioned Funk and Wagnos to Kendra? She didn't know what it was. It's it's a little backwards leaning, I gotta say. Yeah, I'm giving yeah. Kendra the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, then yeah. Didn't didn't Carson Johnny Carson pick that up as part of Carnac? Yeah, Ooh, that's did? what. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's remember right. these envelopes have been in a mayonnaise jar in the sporting goods section of Funkin' Wagnalls or something. <laughs> right? I have hermetically oh, I sealed a mason yeah. jar under yeah, under yeah, chicken yeah. poop. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. So that's right. I think, I think everybody, used... everybody, uh, before they exaggerated stats, right? They can exactly. say thirty percent. Yeah. Right. Just plain old 30%. Sounds great, doesn't it? Before great inflation. Oh, my yeah. gosh. <laughs> Next, we'll have a, a series of questions to be like, the sales of Eggo waffles increased by what percentage after the first season of Stranger Things? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you what, we'll do a, a Amber's next question here. And I'm looking in a decidedly Beth direction when I say, what are the five largest cities in the great state of Oregon? Uh, Portland, Portland, obviously. Portland is number one. Eugene. Eugene, Eugene is number three. Corvallis is not in the top five, oh, according okay. to uh, Salem. Salem's number two. Mm -hmm. Beaverton? Uh, I don't see Beaverton. Beaver. You've got your one, two, and three. Portland, Salem, Eugene. I've got Astoria? number four is a G. Astoria. It's not Astoria. Uh, Gresham. Gresham is, and I have an H for number five. It's not Lincoln no, or Seattle, then. It's Hillsboro. Hillsboro, you know, the Oregon wow. girl knows her stuff. What can I say? Jeez. Well, awesome, given the Beth. first letter <laughs> of the towns, yeah. 
<laughs> the first letter is not X. No, you got them all like uh, perfectly. That's almost exactly in order, except for Eugene. So that's pretty spectacular. Yeah. Um, this is a uh, uh, sort of related to a longstanding meme at the Mayo House, but we'll do the question first. Who, uh, what company is the world's largest appliance manufacturer? Whirlpool? It's not Whirlpool. That would be a nice shout out to our Michigan buddies, but it's not Whirlpool. Oh, GE? It's not GE. LG? It's not, it's not LG. Mm-hmm. Maytag. Sharp. Maytag is another good one. It's not Sharp, but you're getting closer with Sharp because I think that when you hear this Sony? company name, uh, getting closer, Dan. Samsung. Um, you, uh, yeah, Pan- you think other kinds of electronics? Panasonic? It's Panasonic. Uh, is what it is. Oh. Yeah, I think it's they have different uh, sub-brand yeah. names. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So we're, we're at the dinner table about a month ago, and my 10-year-old son says, how come you never see commercials for microwave ovens? And I'm like, get out of my head is all I have to say. Yeah, that one kept me up at least half a night. <laughs> it's like, you, you just don't. Frankly, you don't see like many commercials for like ranges and things like that anymore. They're part of like a Home Depot commercial, but you're not seeing people brag about, oh, our stove like cooks things. Pretty much they all do. Well, you know no, I mean? I, actually, what don't they? Uh, the, the higher end stoves, they... maybe like what is it, Gen Air or KitchenAid? Yeah, 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 maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe. But I, I think right about now, I think the best yeah. advertising for them is they get used on like. America's Test Kitchen, or right. you know, shows like that. Right. What yeah. better endorsement? They have that Wolf Cove line. Yep. Oh, yeah. The yeah, yeah they hardcore. Their sponsors, I think, of the show. Absolutely hardcore. That stuff I was is like looking wow. at cooktops on at Best Buy the other day. Actually, oh. did Not you cry a little? Uh, <laughs> did did you? That- that I want one and I'm not going to be able to get one. I, I did you, along those lines, just inflation. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, did you have to um, sell, sell, sell a vital organ to get one or? Well, you know, yeah, the one I wanted is about 20, it's over $2,000. Oh it's my not, gosh. It's not you three have a nice, or four or five. You have a nice cooktop, Beth. Sealed burners would be. Oh, nice. I see. Sure. Yeah. And I understand that. A downdraft. So, but I like my five gas burners, so I'd mm-hmm. like to keep that. Mm-hmm. I've already picked out my replacement. Don't let the government take ovens. our gas stoves away. Oh, God. Don't. We're not going to do that. <laughs> oh, man. Now this you're is... cooking with gas. <laughs> my dad Professor. used to say that all the time, actually. It's such a great it's su- it's favorite such a great expression. Idea. It is. Yeah. Uh, professors, which city? Uh, Amber's done her her homework. It uh, doesn't have her home city here, and I apologize for not having it memorized, She's Amber. What, but San Fr- San Diego, isn't she? I want to say it's out in California. That's yeah. right. But she has which city of southeastern Michigan has the tagline "the friendly city"? Uh, it's sure not Royal Oak. <laughs> no, 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 not not for parking. Sure as hell ain't not Royal Berkeley. Oak. It's not Ferndale, is it? It's not Ferndale. I could I'm, give I'm a gonna throw it out there. Clawson. Clawson? It's, Clawson? it's not Clawson. That would be, have been great with Friendly. all my Clawson jokes. Um, you know, it's been over the last 10 years. This city has just, considering having grown up around here and the stereotypes surrounding this city, okay, Yes. Okay. The voice of God is telling me in the chat that Amber is in San Diego. Good. Good. Um, This city suddenly had two or three of the top restaurants in southeastern Michigan. Hazel Hazel Park. Park. Hazel Park. Yes, it's Hazel Park. We used to say Hazel Tucky growing Mm -hmm. up, and I I apologize to all our listeners in Kentucky. Um, It's... (laughs) For a yeah, while you, there, it, it was the Wild West. So let's just put it uh, that way. Yeah, you got to admit, John R. was a little rough and tumble. So. Right. However, it does have, in my personal opinion, since everything we do turns to food, um, the best Detroit-style pizza at Louis. Um, I'll yeah. uh, I'll fight anybody over that if I have. That, to. That's the Quinder, though, isn't it? That's the Quinder. Yeah, but yeah, it is Hazel yeah, Park. Yeah, it true. Is Hazel Park proper. It's a good restaurant. Yep, it is. On the ABC TV show. Fantasy Island. So we're we're not doing Fantasy oh. Island 2023. We're doing the Ridge. Okay, with oh Rick, Ricardo Montalban and Irving yep. Velasquez and, and Herbie Velasquez. There was a new one. So you're oh, saying there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> How much in the 70s? This is beautiful. 80s. Did each guest pay 
to go to Fantasy Island in the original series. This is spectacular. A couple thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, you're you're on the right track. It's like 10, you can rephrase this question. Yeah. Like, yeah, what do you grand? think a large amount of money in 1982 would have been? <laughs> ten thousand dollars. Yeah, ten grand. You know, it says 50k, but I I feel like giving it to you because you're all in the right zone. Like, it doesn't sound like that much. That's actually you can yeah. buy a car for that amount of money. You know? Oh, you could either hey, buy that, a car. That was yeah, that was that, that would have covered tuition at CCS for four years. Hmm. Four years. <laughs> Four. What, uh, what are the two main ingredients to that cousin of the martini, the Gibson? Uh, Gibson? It's Gibson. gin. Isn't gin it? is one of them. That is correct. And vermouth. Vermouth, vermouth is the second. Yeah. And onion yeah. is the garnish. Very good. You got the whole uh, onion? cocktail there. Yeah. Pickled onion. Pickled onion oh. for sure. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Gin vermouth and garnish with a pickled onion, so you can see where oh. it uh, intersects a lot. With a, the sounds like a flaming mo light, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, ooh, uh, beginning of the pandemic as we come across the, the third anniversary of the pandemic uh, across the whole world here in a few weeks. Who played Desi Arnaz in the 2021 biopic Being the Ricardos? Oh, um. Jeez, I watched this is the one with Nicole Kidman. That's yeah, right. and... I watched it. Javier Bardem. Yeah, yes. yes. Javier That's Bardem. Right, yeah. I That's actually awesome. thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I just I, I have all of that uh um streaming stuff from the first year or so of the pandemic, like all in a box in my mind. Like, oh, that was the escapism, right? Like yep. Tiger King. Yeah, remember oh. the good old days, you know? Binge watching. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. This term was brought about by a man named James Kraft. What was American cheese called before 1916? So James Kraft, of course, of Kraft Mac and Cheese, decided to call this cheese American cheese. That's what we call it today. But before 1916, it was called what? Velveeta. Colonial cheese or something like that? What? Uh, (laughs) Free? uh... Fake cheese? Uh, you're going to need product? to dumb it down to just about the lowest yellow level. yellow cheese yellow cheese is correct but yes. if you go to the store today you will see signs for yellow cheese and white cheese you will really oh, Maybe because they can't find a better way to name it <laughs> and then oh, and then when did when did they suddenly start going from like american cheese slices to american like cheese food right cheese food which is Velveeta. what does that that's, mean yeah that's what cheese eats cheese food (laughs) okay all i'm saying is i have a big problem because i'm going to get into so much trouble if leslie listens to this episode i would say in general that leslie's family is in love with american cheese they think it's the greatest cheese ever and i think i am not a fan of american cheese. i'm just putting it out there matt Um, you and i you and i we both probably have secret crushes on the cheese lady at westbourne don't we? oh a hundred percent and the fact that i don't see her for years and then suddenly she just reappears i'm like go 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 especially when you ask her about an american gruyere if it's Mm -hmm. any good and she says i wouldn't recommend it (laughs) (laughs) i mean she's recommended so many cheeses for me just to experiment yep absolutely And, and that's half the fun Yep. She is single-handedly took the Mayo family in a brick cheese direction for almost all of our <laughs> yep. melting mm-hmm. cheese. She and in, I uh, agree that years. life is too short to eat cheap cheese. You exactly. Know? You gotta have your Parmigiano. You gotta yep. have your Gruyere. It's Absolutely. Right. She, know, she knows how to you cut. You can't have it very often, but. You yep. know. She knows how to cut the cheese. Oh, wait a minute. That didn't sound right. Um, pr- professors, what street <laughs> does the Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena, California come down? Uh, it has every time come down this street. Main Multi- Street? 100 years. It's not Main Street. Oh. It's actually named after another state of the Union that is not California. Oh, Pennsylvania Avenue? Uh, that's a good guess. but Michigan nope. Avenue. No, that's also a good guess. Oh, I had a one in fifty shot. <laughs> okay, well now it's a one in forty eight now. Now that right, exactly, oh, yeah. exactly. West Virginia Ave. No, 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 no. 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 It's a uh, Colorado Boulevard, is what it oh. is. Colorado Boulevard, oh, in Pasadena, try. California. Cindy Pickett and Lyman Ward portrayed this movie character's parents. 
cool Lyman he Ward. He, he, he was a character. Yeah, he's just kind of a character. Uh, who has got it? Um, who, who's the lady again? Cindy Pickett and Cindy who? Cindy Pickett, Lyman Ward. I know. Pretty, I've, I've seen Lyman Ward. Um, like Pretty in Pink. I'll give you. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Lyman Ward just comes across as that character actor yeah. that just screams "Dad." That's yeah, all yeah. I'm going to say. Well, is it like a Molly Ringwald character, a John Hughes movie? I love how you're going into that bucket in your brain, Dave, because you're close, but you're not quite there. Anything that I would say would would give everything away. Uh, one of the main characters, but not the one I'm referring to, wears a Red Wings jersey for the majority oh, of the Oh, Ferris, oh, Ferris, Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Yeah. Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Ferris Bueller's parents, Cindy Pickett and Lyman Ward. Yep. Okay. Yep. Holy smokes. I've always wondered, and now here it is. How many hotel rooms does the Venetian sport in Las Vegas? Oh, it's huge. It's like, I don't know, 5,000? 5, yeah, I was going to say 5,000. Greater than 5,000. Dan, you could have got a room there. 10,000. It's not 10, though. So we're, we've got our window. Okay. 7,500. Yeah, I was going to say, do, let's do the Kendra yeah. thing. I'm giving it to Beth. It's it's basically 7,100 um, hotel rooms. That's just incredible. And frankly, why didn't you jump on a plane, Dan, and just go to Vegas for the, you know. Actually, we almost drove to Frankenmuth. It I bet very, you did. It was very tempting. I bet you did. Absolutely. Okay. Well, here's another giveaway. I would give it away by looking in a Beth word direction. In what state might you find the Detroit Dam? Is it in Washington, Oregon? Washington, it's Oregon. In yeah. Oregon, yeah, about five miles outside of Detroit, Oregon. Absolutely. That's right. I remember when uh, a student actually told me that there was uh, a Detroit in Oregon. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. That's hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Which two bodies of water does the Suez Canal connect? You know, pandemic memories. Remember the when the ship um, went sideways? Yeah. And. and uh, Oh boy. Mediterranean is correct. Not the Indian Ocean. That's farther mm -hmm. south. Nope. Um, no. Um, you won't crack that? me up sometimes. Is, if is only we Caspian? had that US map in the in the uh is the Caspian, those... the black, uh one no. of those. Um, not the black. No. It's not the Atlantic Ocean. Is it the... No. No. North Think Africa. It, Think bodies in water. Yeah, uh, so Not the Red Sea. Right. It is the Red Sea. Oh, the oh Red there we sea. go. Yeah. 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 Red okay. Sea and Mediterranean. Yep. Very good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What are the two ports that supply ferry service to Mackinac Island? So you can leave from two cities Shepherd. to get to Mackinac. Oh, St. Ignace and Mackinac City. That's there right. Yes, Dan knows that one right off the top of his head. And this... have you guys seen the, the pirate ship? Mm -mm. There's a pirate, pirate ship, ship leaving uh, Mackinac City now. Wow! Really? I can't wait. Yeah, you talk like a pirate. I don't know. I we've yet to take it. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't wait. I immediately started talking like a pirate inside my own mind. <laughs> oh jeez. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, to be quite frank, I didn't even do the stereotypical thing. I just went to Johnny Depp and said oh. to myself, "So you have heard of me." That's right. But in Finland, heard of me. you're the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But <laughs> you have heard of me. Uh, that's in the same uh, basket in my brain as um, you're a thief and a liar. Look, I only lied about being a thief. You know? right. uh, in Finland, this trio is known as Tupu, Hupu, and Lupu. What are they known as in America? Not the Stooges, uh, are they? The no, Jonas the Brothers. <laughs> that no, partial uh, credit for that guess, but that was awesome. Tupu, Hoopu, and Lupu. The three That's, blind mice. Uh, no, no, it sounds like uh, Donald Duck's nephews or it somebody is. like. Okay. Oh, Huey, Dewey, Huey, Dewey, Huey, Dewey, Huey, Dewey, Huey, Dewey, yeah. Yep. Oh, very good, Dave. Yep. Very, uh, very good. Just sounding wise, it sounded close. That's all. I grew up uh, at a weird part of my life. I was in high school. I'll can I'll be uh, um, you know transparent about that when the original Disney Afternoon started, which was the origin of Ducktales. But when they remade Ducktales a couple of years ago, it was actually very very solid storytelling, and every character 
was voiced by a super famous person. It was a ton of fun to watch. And if you like that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. check it out. Yeah. Who was the only person to portray a younger version of themselves as opposed to, let's say, archival footage in the movie Forrest Gump? What a great question. Who was the so- only actor to portray a younger version of himself a younger version of himself as opposed to using archival footage so as opposed to like nixon handing him the award right right uh, oh, gary oh, sinise bear bryant no no it's none of these who else did he run into in that movie i could make a simpsons reference but i'll wait till the very very end but is, is it, it an it, actor or an it, actual person? Gosh, no, that's the problem. It's an actual person, but I oh, would okay. say it's an actor. Initials are DC, and it's is more it a, of a me? personality. Oh, oh no, Clark. that's not me. Dick Clark. Dick Clark is good. You're getting closer. Um, uh, I mean, I've always wanted to say this on the air. I'm so sorry, Michael and Brian. It is, is it a, a male or... <laughs> What? No, nothing. No, no, no. Let's not the rewind person's this. first name is Dick. Um, Cabot? Uh, is Dick Cabot. Okay. Yeah, oh. Dick Cabot. Oh, that's right. He's still alive. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so What's he's that? still alive. Can't have, hey, buddy. We can't have uh, um, Nixon do a non-archival because, of course, he's passed on and Elvis and all the other stuff here. Yeah, yeah I was it's just a... trying to figure out who else he ran into in the movie. That's all. right, right. There's a classic Simpsons bit with the, uh, you know, you've seen it before, the the twirling newspaper that freezes and shows yeah, yeah, yeah. you the headline, and it's the headline is Dick Cavett born, and it has a <laughs> fully grown picture of him next to it. I, I just think that's the funniest thing ever. But I have a very simple, simple sense. Yeah, of humor. well, Dick Cavett, oh, David Frost, you know, Walter Cronkite, you know. Yeah. Those of us who like South Park tend to have simple senses of humor. That's right. It helps. Ooh, gosh, Amber did her homework. According to Google Maps, the end of this road is 24.9 miles north of the McNichols campus, Livernoy. In what township does Livernoy end? Washington Township? No. It's, uh, Ro- it's not Rochester Hills. No, it's not what it says. Auburn Hills. Is it no. Rochester? Nope. No, no. Livernoy ends around 20. Apparently, like around Paul 25 Road? miles north. Oh, of oh, oh! <laughs> What's <laughs> north of Rochester? Is that your township was? You're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good, actually. You're almost there. What's, sure. dude, what's north of Rochester? I don't know. I never go up there. It's okay. Ryan, it says Lake Orion, Lake its Orion. final identity is oh, or, Orion or Orion Road. Oh, Orion Township. Oakland, yes. It's Oakland Township. Oakland actually. Township. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Ah, okay. yes. Okay. Not many folks know that when we say Livernois, that's definitely a little bit of a French revisionist because it, it's the mother <laughs> road. It's the north-south basis of the entirety of southeastern Michigan. It's basically Main Street for every city that it goes through, including the city. Gotcha. Okay. What are the room differences between the U.S. game of Clue and the exact same thing, except for in Britain, you know, they call it Cluedo. They don't have a conservatory. <laughs> that, that is a partial credit sort of they, thing. They have a wine cellar. <laughs> Actually, that is absolutely correct. But Cluedo has a really? cellar. Oh. It is. But what is the room that's replaced from the American side? The Lou. Oh. What, we, our, we have an outdoor bathroom. room the library uh you're naming everything except for the right answer the, the, the <laughs> so kegerator uh the it's kitchen a, if you can believe it cluedo does not have a dining room it okay. has the wine cellar so oh yeah well of course yeah, well, it, make, it makes sense what can i say <clears throat> Ooh, so those are all the questions that amber sent but we get a bonus question it's perfectly oh. timed for the end of our show here so thank you so much amber those are awesome yeah they were great what can you uh what are the seven virtues can you name all seven virtues oh, this is where jim would come in handy <laughs> are we looking uh, at the religious uh, ones or the greek patience. ones patience is a virtue you prudence know? Uh, patience is not on the list, but prudence is. So, courage, uh, generosity, temperance. Courage, temperance. 
Generosity. Generosity is not on the list. However, I'll give you a partial credit. How about on charity? Charity. Okay. 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 Justice. Charity. Justice is there. You're missing two. Hope. Hope. Oh my gosh, there's only one left. Wisdom. Chastity. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I was no, 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 that was a good guess. That was a good guess. The missing f one. Um, frugality. Uh... You've given me, um, given the questions, prudence, courage, temperance, justice, hope, and charity. The last one you're missing is faith. Faith oh. is okay. one right. of the seven right. virtues. Okay, all right. Well, well, yeah, we'll, we'll buy it. So who, 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 um, who created these virtues? <laughs> Not us. Well, I'm just, no, I'm just curious. Where do they come? Where do no, they? No, I, I from? don't. That's a good question because Beth said something. It was you, Beth, right? You're like, are wait, are these like the religious? Yeah, virtues? These, are the but religious these are like virtues. the secular virtues, if that's even well, possible. Right? They, they go back to Greek philosophy. I mean, Plato and Aristotle have a th basically a theory of virtues characteristic right. that right. you need to be good at the job of being a human being right essentially right and courage and generosity and temperance and wisdom and aristotle would add sort of friendliness and you know being even tempered not mm -hmm. overly angry yeah. uh all so yeah i mean the before religion decided to stamp some of them with the imprimatur of the sacred uh they had a secular foundation in ancient Greece. There you go. Uh, I I, th I think the seven deadly sins are a lot more fun, though. Huh? I mean, I'm going to add nice teeth and good smell to the list. That's what I'm going to do. I just well, there's it. also a money. list of of uh, vices. Right, Ooh. right. So, the opposite of the, the word uh, virtue. The Nestle Quick Bunny is where I got my wrong answer. Patience is a virtue from the old Nestle Quick. Yeah, yeah. The upper <laughs> hours. So I thought that was one of them. Well, I mean, again, if we translate that to temperance, I think you're you're pretty darn close. So close enough. Season, so, yeah. Right. Professors, I'm so sorry. We are a little bit over time, but it's always fun. And thanks again, Amber, for sending those great questions. But the time has come for us to say goodbye. Jason. Adios. Dan. Goodbye. Beth. Bye. And Dave. See ya. And now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. Ask the Professor is transcribed in, you know, all of our homes, but usually it's in the Briggs Building in the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. Ask the Professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo.